Scott Eastwood's no acting ass is in this as well. Um, he's like, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> you gotta be. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Look It Up podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today, we are discussing Suicide Squad. Yes, Suicide Squad, the 2016 notorious film has so much baggage, great cast, interesting director, uh, but what the hell happened here? Everyone has heard about it, everyone has either talked about it, seen it, heard, uh, has some sort of relation to it, and if you don't, it's probably because you just weren't interested in it or had no idea, or you might just be a Marvel fanboy or girl, or non-binary fan, whatever. Um, Suicide Squad 2016 was one of the most interesting projects of that year. It was highly anticipated for up to over a year um, up to its release. We had a killer cast of uh, Will Smith, Jared Leto, Margot Robbie, Jen, uh, Joel uh, Kinnaman, Viola Davis, Jai Courtney, Jay Hernandez. We have tons of people down the list. Um, great cast. It's got uh, David Ayer's... Uh, kind of his uh, flair about him. Uh, David Ayer is a, a notorious director known for an amalgamation of different types of movies. Some of them really good. Some of them, you know, could be desirably a little bit better in some scenarios. Um, a lot of times he is the writer and director on a lot of his work. Um, more recently, he was uh, just the producer on Birds of Prey, but he was um, director of Bright, uh, he was, uh, director and writer of Fury, I really liked that one, Sabotage, didn't see that one, Into Watch, I thought that was pretty good, writer and director, and he was also the writing, on, on the writing team of, uh, Training Day, I don't think he was the solo, he was a solo writer on there, so, um, that is one of, uh, he's, as well as the writer on Fast and Furious as well, the Fast and Furious, the original, so he has quite an amalgamation of uh, different types of movies under his belt. A lot of them kind of are, are quote unquote gritty, and some of them have like this, you know, this street kind of uh, vibe to him, this little urban vibe to him, which is uh, the, what apparently he says he grew up in. Now this movie is on 123 minutes, just over two hours. Uh, 175 million dollars it made back over 746 million dollars in the box office so this was considerably a success from a financial standpoint it's when the story and everything else that came in that became a little bit uh you know wonky with this um with this movie so suicide squad 2016 an american superhero film based on the dc comic super villain team of the same name the third installment of the dceu and it was written and directed by david Ayer. it stars an ensemble cast as we just listed um and uh Let's see. In in the film, a secret government agency led by Amanda Waller, who is this hard brooding, hard ass, played by um, Viola Davis, and she's amazing in both of these movies. I'm going to kind of talk about both the Suicide Squad and Suicide Squad a little bit interchangeably. I'll leave a section for everybody that has seen at the super set of the end of this. Uh, uh, review. It's going to be a non-spoiler of the regular Suicide Squad 2016. Then we're going to go into spoilers of the 2016 version. And then we're going to do a little comparison of the the two movies together. And along the way, we'll talk about them, uh, about what the, the good and the bad and the ugly and everything that happened in between there. But um, overall, um, I had a lot of memory of this movie coming out and it just got absolutely ridiculed. It got ripped to shreds from, um, head to toe. A lot of people were not, uh, pleased with how this movie came out. And I gotta say so much of it is from the good and the bad of what the marketing department did. The marketing department ended up, uh, getting final cut. They did such an amazing job, quote unquote, amazing job 
of the marketing of this movie. It's got these vibrant colors unlike anything else. It was kind of like the reaction. It's got these this killer soundtrack that people thought were going to do gangbusters. They were trying to kind of match the Guardians of the Galaxy that had kind of come out, I think, one or two years earlier. Was that 2014 Galaxy? I, I don't remember exactly. but And then eventually they hired the guy that did Guardians of the Galaxy to come do Suicide Squad anyways. So anyways... Um, there was this reaction to the marketing that it just it was going to be a freaking hit. It, we had uh, Margot Robbie who was uh, who was playing Mar uh, who was playing um, Harley Quinn for the first time, and she just embodied this role. I think that uh, from the casting, I think the majority of the casting is just is is stellar. I don't think that anyone would say anything negative about that. The problem with this movie was the marketing department did such a great job with it. Uh, the marketing. They gave them full control of the final say of the movie, So, from what I heard. So when they got such a positive response of everybody was like, oh my gosh, Bohemian Rhapsody, all the, uh, you know, this Blitzkrieg bop, all this stuff is hitting, you know, uh, hitting all, all the stride that they want. And Warner Brothers was loving it. They gave the movie to the marketing department. And apparently the marketing department got the very last cut of the movie and completely wrecked the soundtrack they just felt like they kept i call this on the suicide the suicide squad i might call uh the suicide squad uh uh squad two so we'll call uh suicide squad 2021 squad two even though it's not an, a direct uh sequel it's more of like a soft reboot it's kind of like a weird in between uh of what it is so we'll call it squad two so squad two um the they did not go ha hog wild with uh the soundtrack as they did with this first one the the first suicide squad almost is uh is almost just like listening to somebody's playlist uh sometimes uh spotify playlist sometimes quentin tarantino has this uh, music that he just continuously will play in his movies i think once upon a time in hollywood was kind of a uh kind of a victim of it but literally we would hop in a character's car and press play and listen to a song and sometimes listen to a full song and then another song so sometimes movies feel like they're made for the uh the director to kind of get out uh, some of their favorite stuff this is oh they've always wanted this song in in a movie let's play it so it kind of felt like that but to my knowledge david Ayer did not have final cut of uh, the music that was chosen in this movie. And so thus, it felt like it was kind of pulled together left and right. It didn't feel exactly natural. So um, let's go back a little bit into what's going on into this movie. What is the Suicide Squad anyway? So it's uh, Suicide Squad is uh, a secret government agency led by Amanda Waller. She recruits super uh, recruits imprisoned supervillains to execute dangerous black ops missions and save the world from a powerful threat in exchange for reducing the sentences. And most of the, t most of the times, those make sense. But the Suicide Squad has to have a relevant villain to go against. And a lot of the time, it doesn't feel like the villain in this um, in the Suicide Squad universe makes sense for them to be going against. It's like they need to be going against people that are their level, not like gods. So... It is interesting to see the direction this ends, ends up going. So in February uh, 09, a Suicide Squad film was developed by 2009. My God, this was a long time to, direct, uh, to, to get all going. So a Suicide Squad film was developed by Warner Brothers. Air signed on to, and, to write and direct by, uh, in September 2014. And by October, the casting process had begun. Principal photography began in uh, Ontario. Toronto uh, on April 13th, 2015, an initial filming in Chicago, and it ended later that year. So they did a, a lot of this. Uh, this movie was pretty much completed within about two years, give or take how long they had it in post-production for, you know, the animation, uh, you know, the, the CGI and stuff like that. Um, it, uh, Suicide Squad premiered in New York City on August 1st, 2016, released in the United States, and Real D, 3D, IMAX, 3D, all the Ds. And then it received a big D <laughs> from the critics. Um, so uh, 
yeah, following the strong uh, debut of the set new box office records, it set new box office records. The film grossed over seven hundred forty-six million dollars worldwide, making it the tenth highest-grossing film in twenty sixteen. The film received negative reviews from critics and praise for the cast, but criticism for its plot and direction, which I completely agree. Even though it's considered a botched project from the marketing department, and it's what I'm hearing a little bit. Um, uh it's still the plotting was terrible it didn't it didn't make sense for this to be like this at all um the film was nominated for and won multiple awards across various categories including oscar for best makeup and hairstyling which i assume was for the crocodile guy um 80 89th uh academy awards making it the first film in the dceu to to win academy award uh it is followed by the spin-off film birds of prey starring robbie in 2012 sorry 2020 and a uh, standalone sequel, The Suicide Squad, in 2021, with uh, Robbie Kenneman, Davis, and Courtney returning. So, on top of all of that, there was a lot of anticipation for this as well. If I remember correctly, this was one of the first uh, interpretations of the Joker that we were going to get since Heath Ledger's death. Um, and so there was just a lot of uh, buildup behind this, you know. So we have Harley coming on screen for one of the big screen for one of the first times, if I can remember correctly. And we also have Jared Leto as the Joker. There was a lot of anticipation. And the way the marketing shows how the movie is going to progress, it, it shows like a lot of fun scenes, a lot of action, a lot of jokes, a lot of things that are in the movie. But the way that the Joker is portrayed in this, in the marketing, makes it look like he's the primary villain. And he, spoiler alert, is is more or less relegated to the side. He, The Joker, the, the biggest problem with this besides the soundtrack and some of the editing flaws it has in it and, and the kind of the plotting that's just weird um, is the fact that it can't find an antagonist that it really wants to to focus on. It, it feels like the Joker is put in this movie because of corporate reasons. And there was so much leading up to uh, Jared Leto being just as, like this crazy guy on set. He was sending like rats to to like Viola Davis and shit like that and um use condoms and shit like I, I bullet shells and stuff to to his cast. And it just felt like castmates, and it felt like uh, apparently he might have been acting just weird on set too. I don't know. A lot of people were just like, "All right, is this guy's gonna be so off the wall? We know, watch out, watch out. He's got damaged on the side. He's got beef. You know, it's like, what is what exactly is going on? So it takes until the fact is you you have to go see his performance to kind of understand what's going on and even then honestly it feels like Jared Leto's on drugs the majority of the movie um without going into too many spoilers um i didn't hate this movie as much as i thought i was going to going um after watching the suicide squad or squad 2 um 2021 um watching squad 2 and then going back and watching 2016 i didn't hate the first one i I felt like the first one had so much promise for it and it has just a few things that I, that don't age well with regarding how they, they treat like the Harley Quinn character is just kind of a, an object to kind of ogle in a way. But some of her lines are amazing and her performance and her delivery and the way the cast is kind of bouncing off each other, I do feel like relatively works. Um, the crudeness of the new Suicide Squad 2 turns me off just a tad bit with... Uh, just how uh, cynical it is in a way and kind of it does poke fun at its own self but not always for the the better in, in my opinion so um the the good things about the suicide squad uh or the uh, get uh, for suicide squad 2016 not the um is that i think the pacing really helps it despite the fact the pacing the, the plot may be stupid but it the plot is hardly comes to a complete halt as does the second one in my opinion sometimes the second one feels like it comes has a little bit of sequelitis a little bit where we're just kind of like hanging out you know the it's not nearly as intense i guess at some parts but i just watched like the uh uh 
this the suicide squad first hour again just to kind of realign my head a little bit to see what was going on i, I keep looking up because my i have my projector up ahead so that's why i keep looking <laughs> um so um i watched suicide squad the suicide squad squad 2 um the first hour again after what recording my podcast on it re- review and all of that and i looked at the time it is at least an hour until um you know harley quinn is with the rest of the group and i'm not going to give too much more spoilers or anything else about the the squad 2 movie but i got to say uh it's a sometimes i feel like it's a crime to uh have a decent movie or a decent show at the beginning and everyone comes together and then the second one they come and they disperse the crew and you have to like spend time a little bit alone with them and it's like eh, not all characters are best served alone or without the rest of the cast harley quinn's one of them i feel that um kind of suffered from that just a little bit so um with saying that yes i think there's there are there are a lot of pros there's a reason that the franchising um the sorry the merchandising of this movie really worked i remember seeing uh, jared leto joker stuff everywhere it's freaking fraser you know that type of thing harley quinn her i felt like all of her merchandising was everywhere and maybe not so much will smith as dead shot but uh you know no money no honey i, I was like okay i feel you um i i enjoy the pacing in the writing for a lot of these characters um it may not be the best it i'm not i'm not saying at at any point do i think this is like super a grade material or anything like that but you can't put them down for not at least trying because you can tell when people don't give a shit about a movie that you can tell when they're not putting at least half effort and i can tell watching uh suicide squad 2016 that you know they believe they're making a really good movie a really entertaining movie and maybe not every scene is ultra compelling but i gotta say i was never bored um i the the pacing you know is is really in the favor of it that that two hour mark really hit for me um on suicide squad versus squad two so let's hop into the spoiler section of suicide squad 2016 and we can dive a little bit deeper into the beef and what else uh made this movie really tick so i gotta say i'm i'm gonna give it a seven maybe i think most days it would have been a six out of ten but because i'm so far removed from this movie's marketing in a way the marketing really can do a, a number on you if you're expecting this thing, but you get another thing. And I think everybody was expecting just the Joker to be the thing, to be the it, to be the to be the defining thing of this moment, you know, uh, of this movie. Sorry, no, no of, this, of this moment. No, of this movie. And because he wasn't, I feel like critics and people turned against this movie saying damn well this movie wasn't good at all you know the soundtrack was all over the place they played four songs in the first five minutes of the movie and everybody was introduced almost three times yeah there's you know it commits cinema sins that should never be committed but um and probably right rightfully should, so should get a six out of ten it probably will get a, i'm gonna say six out of ten because it's it's not as competent as a movie as uh squad two the 2021 version um but i gotta say i enjoyed it and it it didn't leave me in a way where i was like this felt like a waste of time if that marketing hadn't made it look like the joker was even in the movie like let's just say hypothetically they didn't even advertise the joker at all being in the movie then i think it would be a lot more forgivable as a movie um but yeah i was i was going in expecting it to be much worse to feel like all characters felt like they were written from the same person um i didn't feel that i i honestly think that there is a lot of heart in it and I've talked about it with uh, the Zack Snyder uh, recut of the Justice League saying that, you know, that giving that movie another $50 million to get recut and get all CGI in it and all that stuff. Um, yeah, that that was probably a cool idea for HBO Max. But I mean, the Suicide Squad, uh, I think with another edit of a different 
sound, a, a couple different soundtracks, maybe a couple different edits of taking some cringy lines out um, or changing some lines. Um, it, it really could be salvaged. What what I'm seeing with Suicide Squad 2016 is a movie that is so close to being a really good movie. It just uh, a few missteps. And so that's the unfortunate thing about it. So um, I'm glad glad it exists. It it did have a lot to live up to. And because of the marketing, because of the editing, all of that, just it failed to hit that mark. So let's hop into the plot for Suicide Squad 2016. If you want the full review, be sure to check out patreon.com slash lucky dog podcast. Also check out lucky dog podcast.com for all the social medias. You'll be able to hang out, chill. We're in the discords, we're on the Facebooks, on the Instagrams, we're on the beefs. Um, we're on all is the beefs uh, a social media now? Because if it's not, then it, it might as well be, you know, um, we're on we're on all of them. So, uh, yeah, be sure to check out all the good stuff. All the podcast um, links are in the description. Remember, if you want this podcast early, go to patreon.com slash podcast. Again, links in the description. Um, we cannot do this without you. If you haven't seen this movie, so um, we're about to hop into the spoiler section. Thumbs up, subscribe, let me know how I can improve. I know that this is a new studio, it might sound a little different, might look a little different. I'm still improving on all of that stuff. So bear with me on that. Um, you know, pop a comment, say what's up. Uh, and uh, yeah, I gotta, I'm going to give a quick shout out to everybody that has subscribed in the last, um, uh, last few days. Let's see, let's see. Um, just a quick. Thank you to everybody. Um, yeah, uh, Zayad Omar and uh, Thinly Gatso and M. Viron. Um, thank y'all. I appreciate uh, all your support and stuff like that. You know, this is uh, not an easy grind to do. And so, uh, appreciate that. So, hop into the spoiler section with me on Suicide Squad. 2016 was that good <laughs> i was i was trying to do the uh the leto joker as opposed to the heath ledger joker so let's just talk about it straight up obviously jared leto is no match for um heath ledger's joker i mean it, it, they shouldn't even be uh compared even a little bit there's no there is no comparison because uh it's just completely different interpretations this feels like someone that watched the joker 2017 was that what that was with uh joaquin phoenix and or was that 2018 anyways the one with joaquin phoenix and they wanted to be like that one and it's just like that uh, it's just kind of crazy to think about the different varieties of types of jokers and how serious they can be within the the realm of the movies um yeah just 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 craziness so um let's hop into the plot real quick all right in the aftermath of superman's death intelligence officer amanda waller convinces the u.s government to greenlight task force x x Ax! <laughs> uh, a response team of criminals and supervillains and given not all of them have the coolest powers the team will be used to combat metahuman threats under waller's control using uh nanite bombs implanted in their head which i thought was going to literally have their head explode but i think it's just like Bleh! you know it's that kind of thing it's all in the neck which can be remotely detonated and if successful um, if successful, they will have their short, uh, sentence short, shortened. Um, the beginning of this movie has like a double intro. I got to say, it's like, we're introduced to Harley and we're introduced to Deadshot on a separate line or like the first five minutes. And I got to say, everybody has their own song that they play. They play their own, like, or that, that, that goes along, their own theme song, that literal own theme song that goes along with the fucking, um, the fucking thing. You know, it's like, 
All right. Well, uh, I guess it's been four minutes in the movie and we've heard about five separate top songs of 2016 <laughs> or, or just top songs in general. It's like, all right. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's kind of just like uh, the editing in the first hour of this is almost manic. Um, June Moon, Dr. June Moon, an American archaeologist, becomes possessed by dem dem demonic witch enchantress waller can control enchantress by seizing her magical heart which wounds her if it is struck um waller's subordinate uh colonial uh flag colonel sorry colonial flag rick flag is in love with uh moon and is made a member of task force x however enchantress betrays waller uh, conquering Midway City, transforming humans into monsters, and summoning her brother, Incubus, to destroy mankind. Now, this is a whole lot of shit that happens in the first... <laughs> uh, I gotta say, it's probably within the first 40 minutes that we were introduced to the just about the entire team. Plus, we're introduced to like you know how they're being controlled, that all that good stuff. But we're also introduced to June Moon, who just just the, this character that feels supremely overpowered, and sh you don't go to the Suicide Squad for June Moon. You go to the Justice League, or you go to like uh, you know the gods of the world. It's like these are not the gods of the world. You don't go to people who have baseball bats, Crocodile Man, and someone that carries a katana, <laughs> like. What in the heck is going on? So, uh, it, I mean, it, the reasoning to have these characters be the ones didn't really make much sense, in my opinion, besides it all feeling like, uh, I don't know, before it all starts to feel just like the Guardians of the Galaxy ridiculous nonsense. We got a big tree man. We got a big raccoon that's been tested on. We got a big, you know, overly serious macho guy. Um Dave Batista. Um, uh, anyways, so what do we have here? Um, Task Force X is formed to stop Enchantress using six inmates from Bellarive Penitentiary. The roster consists, uh, sorry, the roster consists of Hitman's Deadshot, played by Will Smith, who is just like this badass. He can basically shoot anybody from any direction and never misses, kind of thing. Um, he wants to reunite with his daughter Zoe. Um, Harley Quinn, a former psychologist turned girlfriend of Gotham's crime lord, uh, Joker. Australian thief Captain Boomerang is a pyrokinetic ex-gangster. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Australian thief is Captain Boomerang, which why the fuck would you need a thief? I don't even remember them him, him ever needing to be stealing nothing. <laughs> um, pyrokinetic. Uh, kinetic ex gangster el diablos mutant can uh is el diablo there's a mutant cannibal is named killer croc and i don't think he fucking eats anybody did he eat anybody in this and uh mercenary slipknot um who's we have already know what happens slipknot instantly dies the team are led by flag and are joined by the associates associates katana uh, a Japanese swordswoman, Waller, and Flag deliberately hide the latter's relationship with Moon. Um, so yeah, they don't really want to just you know disclose that for whatever reason. Either. They don't want the mission to be compromised. So, anyways, this is just like an amalgamation of random fucks that are in here. I'll go over. Will Smith is awesome as Deadshot. He 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 played a. a, a you know, I, he played his character well. It, it's just kind of uh, not an interesting character to have with his, the dynamic with his daughter. I don't think that that dynamic works very well. Harley Quinn, very interesting, and honestly, it felt like it felt like we needed about twenty minutes of who the hell each one of these people were. There's just not enough time to kind of make us feel like we give a shit about any of these people. Except for Harley Quinn, maybe. Um, I mean, just because we see f minor flashbacks of what she's been through, through and what other people have talked about um, her going through. 
And the biggest problem is the agency she has is feels very lackluster, I think, in some opinions. some I think some people might say that she's too focused around the Joker, which is the benefit of the, the Suicide Squad 2, Squad 2, um, that it's not really as heavily relegated on the being tied to the Joker or in, in any guy, you know? She's getting her own stuff to do. So, um, let me see what we have. Uh, upon arrival, so, and we get all of this. I think, like like I said, the pacing's impeccable in this. We get all of this within, like, the first 40 minutes, and it's a lot of information. Yeah, the, the, the about face they do on here is kind of intense. Uh, the squad locates... Uh, Enchantress in the flooded subway station where Killer Croc and Flag's p uh, platoon of Navy SEALs, Scott Eastwood's no acting ass is in this as well. Um, he's like, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he's like, go on, make my day. <laughs> he's make my day junior. Oh my goodness, fucking Eastwood. Um... So they plant bombs underneath the city. Like, I guess that would make sense. That's the best way to kill a god is to, to hit it with a bomb. That's that's what I've heard. Uh, El Diablo embraces the demonic nature of his pyrokinesis and sacrificing himself to allow the bomb to destroy Incubus. And I gotta say, El Diablo goes fucking like ham. He's like... He's got like these crazy like headdress going on. He looks like a giant... Uh, I don't even know what... Like tiki... Tiki Native American fire guys, like, like, just look like a fucking boss. I was like, dude, this is what you've been able to do the whole time. I mean, fucking El Diablo and what feels like Boomerang are like useless throughout the majority of this fucking thing. Oh my, uh, throughout the majority of the movie. Um, so and the incub, uh, sorry, Enchantress invites the squad to join her, and Harley's, uh appears tempted but uses it as a ruse to cut out enchantress's heart she is defeated and flag crushes her heart killing her and releasing moon from her control um flag gives like no fucks about moon at this point and i'll be honest even though he's like you know you know he's sort of sad as soon as that happens he doesn't even give a fuck about her he's like come here will smith i need a fucking hug man i thought you were gonna be a golden man you know like he didn't even say anything about moon at first and then we find out that she's gonna be okay she's like crawling out she's like what's going on and flag's like ooh, 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 ooh. that's what i was with <laughs> he's just like damn so um yeah just just kind of ridiculous Okay, so, yeah, we do get kind of a flash of, like, some of the main characters and what they really want. It's like Enchantress is, like, trying to show them what they really want at the end. It's like Joker and Harley. She's like, I lost my pudding. And she got that Brooklyn ass accent and stuff like that. It's like, uh, okay. Um, I see that she, you know, she has, like, a, a, a drive to be with Joker, but not even as the Joker in Harley. She wants to be with like uh, the the toned down version kind of thing, um, and uh, and then we have like the Batman kind of flashback with Will Smith and the daughter kind of thing. The the got to be better for the daughter, you know. You, you, that's all you can do these days, um, and you know she's like Daddy no. You know, anytime you get like a Will Smith scene and you get water dropping all over his face, you're like, Aah! you know, you get that uh, Hancock scene where he's like trying to get out. Like, you know, it's just, we got Will Smith acting his freaking ass off in this, bring, trying to bring it, bring it home for us. Um, not bad, not bad. I, I I thought it was it was pretty decent. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Flag doesn't really give a fuck about Moon until he sees her like crawling out from all that shit. And he's like, oh shit, she's alive. So anyways, um, Waller appears from out of like nowhere after, I, I think I forgot to mention that Waller goes through like the entire downstairs area of like the basement headquarters and just da, 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 kills everybody in the fucking thing. And I remember Will Smith sees this too. And he's like, holy fuck, that's cold. Or something like that. And Flag sees it too. And they don't say anything to the rest of the squad about that. I don't I don't believe. Um, 
it's just like all right that was kind of just used as a just a side tangent to be cold i guess i don't know um or as a joke so anyways waller appears removing 10 years off each member's sentence and rewarding them with requests except for boomerang <laughs> um the joker alive breaks into bella reeve and rescues harley um and yeah i it, it seems like a, a great way to lead into the next movie which i don't believe even has leto in it at all i don't so i kind of forgot i don't think bird birds of prey doesn't have it to my knowledge i don't i don't think this outro really leads into anything in my opinion in the other movies could be wrong could be wrong y'all y'all tell me in the comments if i got that incorrect you can go ahead along with everything else so in the mid credits scene waller meets bruce wayne who agrees to aid her reputation in exchange for government files on the growing meta community meta human community in order to build his own super team she advises him to stop working late nights implying she knows bruce is batman he tells Waller to shut it down. Shut down Task Force X. Um, and that is Suicide Squad 2016. Let me know what you thought about the review. Let me know what you thought about the movie Suicide Squad 2016. Again, I think we're going to give this a 6 out of 10. It's still not as bad as I remember. Uh in my mind so that's a glowing review for you right there um but yeah so um if you're interested in uh the suicide squad go check that out as well i might do just a quick uh reaction in between about how i felt about those two movies just talking about these two movies actually i, I will real quick just to kind of give you a heads up um so yeah the comparing the two movies um Obviously, Suicide Squad 2, Squad 2, takes all the best things, all the best formula of the Suicide Squad 1. Um, it takes that best parts. Unfortunately, we didn't get Will Smith back. I don't remember why Will Smith didn't come back. and Somebody might have to let me know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it takes the, takes, the, uh, takes the best parts, such as uh, Harley Quinn takes the dead like 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 character um made, made him bloodshot got viola davis back we got rick flag back even jai courtney's back and i didn't think jai courtney is that terrible i remember him being a lot worse in, in suicide squad 2016 just being like this guy's ridiculous i don't think he's as bad looking back at it now i just don't think they give him anything to do um Killer Croc is kind of a slight stereotype. <laughs> he said, all he wants is B-E-T-O. Okay, then just say fuck it then. Um, and, uh, of course, um, the one lady with the katana is uh, it's like, all right, is that all she has to do? All she can do is... There's just not, like, not enough time to like develop everybody. Um, I do feel like the development on the characters in the second movie is a lot better. The story as a whole in a movie as a complete whole in the second one is better it feels more like a complete movie and a complete story like they thought about all of it the pacing i think the pacing in squad one is better than the second one the second one has 10 extra minutes in it but it almost feels like it's 20 extra minutes longer but i don't really know why that 10 extra minutes feels like it does so much more um i do think uh squad one is um it's not it's not as funny, but there are jokes in it that I laughed at. There's jokes with, um, uh, what is the the character name? Uh, Jai Courtney Hernandez, Carly DeVine, Ike Barinholtz. Ike Barinholtz is, I like Bike, Ike Barinholtz. I think that dude is hilarious. And he's not even on the poster for uh, Suicide Squad 1. And I think he's one of the standouts of the, the Suicide Squad um, in that first one. Like, he's kind of riffing he's got these uh, comedic elements with uh harley and i think that they're hilarious i think he's he's great in it um yeah so despite it not aging nearly as well and just overall some of the plots obviously the marketing in the first one is a double-edged sword it got everybody into the theater but it also made everyone kind of it tricked everyone to thinking that 
the Joker was going to be in a lot more as well. Um, so it's a double-edged sword. I think the soundtrack is going to go to Squad 2, in my opinion, just for the... It just calls less attention to itself. But it's not nearly as memorable. So it's kind of like a... Uh, it's it's the double-edged sword thing again. So, um, yeah, the, the, the main thing about... The main difference in between... Uh, these two movies is that Squad 2 feels like a way more refined version of everything they wish they could have done with the first one. It feels like they just took off the the, the hinges, took off the rails and said, all right, let's just go balls to the wall and do everything we can for the second one uh, or this soft reboot of The Suicide Squad 2021. And so that's why the second one feels a little bit more thought out, a little bit more um, complete as a movie. So yeah, so not necessarily. I don't. I, I I can't necessarily say that the second one's like that much better. I, I'm not like head over heels for it because uh, the first one has this level of uh, heart to it that I'm not gonna deny. You know, so I'm not gonna completely bash it. I'm you know it's it's got it's it's merits to it, and I think that it deserves a fair uh, a fair critique as well. So. Yeah, let me know what you thought about the two movies. Let me know about the review. Let me know how I can improve. Thumbs up. That extremely helps people find it. Comments, all that good stuff. Subscribe, follow, whatever you got to do to support the podcast. I don't know why I'm doing like this, but I I am. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me know how I can improve. Let me know what kind of reviews you're looking for. Go ahead and check out the patreon.com slash lookitoutpodcast, lookitoutpodcast.com. Um, all the... Uh, links are in the description um yeah let me know how i can improve and ah, 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 take it easy kind of sound like a parrot not so much like the joker <laughs>